welcome to Shaker to Go. In today's demo, I'm going to show you how to prep and paint one of our paintable doors. I get a lot of questions recently upon this subject, and I just want to explain to you how it's done. So, in front of us here, we have a pre painted version, so something that we have tested in the past. You can see we've got three different test areas. This actually is a primer that we used to test whether our paintable vinyl was a paint grade and it was suitable enough for onward painting. And we tested the primer and the top coat and then also the top coat alone. With the primer and top coat test, both the primer and the top coat, one on top of the other, performed really well. And also when we tested the top coat on its own, it performed just as well as the primer and the top coat combination. So we're satisfied that the paintable vinyl that we offer for our paintable doors is suitable for just top coat alone. So I'm going to talk you through the process of prepping a door ready for top coat only. So here's a paintable door. So before anything's been done to it, you can see it is unsanded. And the first thing we need to do is to prep this door ready for paint. So here I have, this is a round sanding disc for one of our sanders in the workshop but you can use just standard sandpaper. I would recommend going for a medium grit, not a fine grit. So you're looking for a medium, um, not a coarse or not a fine sandpaper. This one, if you are interested, is 120 grit, which for us is quite a medium grit. It's good for fast sanding and um, delicate sanding as well. So in this instance, I'm gonna be light-handed with it. We don't need to sand any imperfections out. What we're doing is creating a key for the paint to stick to. So I'm going to sand one end of this door to show you how easy the painting procedure is. We're just adding some little grooves into the door to make it a bit rougher so that when we put the paint on, it's got loads of little scratches to get into and grip onto, which means that when we do fit this to a cupboard or a wardrobe, there's no risk of the paint cracking or coming off. So it's a real simple procedure, just lightly sand all of the areas that you want to paint. Make sure you get into all the little corners. Not that they're high wear areas, the little corners don't really get affected by chipping, but the external wedges like these corners here, it's good practice to make sure that they are sanded so that any knocks on the edge of the door won't result in a crack. Right, that's pretty much all you need to do. I've only done this section of the door. I don't need to paint the whole door for the demo. So the next thing to do is to clear off the dust. So just get a cloth, so you can use a microfiber cloth or you can use just some general tissue paper. This is like a, an industrial tissue paper just for cleaning purposes. Um, but it's literally just to get the dust off. You could just blow it all off, but there'll still be residual dust on there. Just make sure you try your best to get all the dust off and then you'll get a perfect finish. Now that's done, we're gonna move on to paint. We recommend using little green paints for top coating these doors. It's the paint we tested on the demo door and it's just generally a much better paint than what we have found in DIY shops and paint suppliers. This is our go-to if you want a good finish that's gonna be reliable. First thing you need to do, obviously pop open the paint can, is stir the paint. So little green, normally send a stirring stick with each tin of paint. Give it a good stir just to mix in all the pigments inside the paint. Once that is all mixed together and it's a uniform color, then you can begin your painting process. Now I like to use a brush around a 50 millimeter width. So that's kind of inch and a half or something like that in old terms. Load your paintbrush up and then just go through all the delicate areas first. So we want to do internal edges and outside edges. Now when you're going through painting these edges, you need to make sure that the surface you're painting on is not going to get drips of paint on. So the best thing to do is to grab something like a big chopping board or something you can prop the door up on. Now we can work on these edges. So you don't need to load the paint up. You might need to do two coats on these doors just to get them perfect. But you can see how much color 
there is, so how much pigment there is in these little green paints. They're just so easy to use. So that's the outside edges done. And then move on to these inner edges here. Then load your paintbrush up again. And we'll go for the main sections of the door. And when you're doing these sections, you want to make the paintwork look nice. So obviously when you're painting, you're getting brush strokes. But one thing to remember with brush strokes is they can work to your advantage. So where this is made to look like a five piece handmade door, you can mimic the direction that wood grain would naturally be. So if we allow the paint to go on first, We can tidy up all these areas once we're done. Any excess paint you can obviously move over to your panel in the middle. And just remember that you will have areas where bits of the white paintable vinyl is going to show through, but that's where your second coat comes in. So now all the paint's on, I've got brush marks everywhere. These side pieces you want to brush top to bottom. But when you do this section here, you may interfere with those. So the best thing to do is start with the smaller sections and you just want to drag your brush across just to get the paint in that direction and your brush strokes will all go that way. Now I did go over this point, so what I'm going to do is pull my brush down along this edge nice and lightly and then all of our brush strokes are going in the same direction as the panel sections on the door. So that's the first coat and what we're going to do is just wait for that to dry and then we'll come back and give it a second coat just to complete the painting process. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half. I've had the heating on in this house, um, just ready to get this dried to show you the second coat. So just a tip anyway, I forgot to mention, just put a bit of cling film over your brush. You won't have to wash it out, it won't dry off. It is just ready to use again. So this coat has been sanded pretty similar to what we did originally but ultra light on this sanding session so between your first coat and second coat you still need to sand very slightly just to allow a key between the two top coats so second coat goes on much the same as the first coat except this time you don't have to apply as much so don't forget around your edges Make sure you've got good coverage so you haven't missed any spots. You don't really want to be doing a third coat because it's just too much. So again, make sure you're brushing in the direction of your previous brush strokes. Just makes finishing up a lot simpler. Now you've got your two top coats done, all you've got to do is just wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, you should be able to handle it totally fine without any worrying about damaging it. Two coats, like I said, is perfect for this. If you do have any questions, nip onto the how-to page and you'll see more advice on other topics that will help you finish your projects.